Uh, hello there, my name is Jamie. Uh, Jamie Ison. You see me today at Southfield Reservoir near Doncaster. Um, cracking natural, natural type of venue. It's full of skimmers, um, some big bream. Um, some, been caught up to probably five pound in the last few matches. Um, windy day, always is windy here. Plenty of toll on the venue. Um, it's been it's been a, a tough venue the last few weeks, but uh, we caught a few skimmers today. We're getting a few few indications. So uh, looking forward to a good section. Okay, right today. Um, the bream here aren't really a long way out here today, so as you can see there's a bit of wind on it today, but we're only fishing at 45 metres today, which is it's, it's a nice comfortable distance. Um, you can hit the clip easily, even if that wind gets up. Um, today's combination of rod and reel today, really, for fishing this range is, I'm fishing a slightly larger reel than normal. Uh, it's a 6,000 reel today, in conjunction with a 12 foot rod. Um, this particular reel, um, it's a PCR 6000 Preston, um, lovely reel, can cast a hell of a lot further than what I'm casting today, but one key lesson on this venue is that the, the wind and, can really increase and change dramatically, um, and having a reel like this means that if you have got to punch it a little bit harder, sometimes you have got to go a little bit further out to stay in touch with the fish as well, this reel means you don't have to have duplicate kits set up and you can still go a little bit further with this. Um, I'm using it with a, a 12 foot uh, Mava reactor light, two piece feeder rod, beautiful skimmer rod, absolutely lovely. Um, it's nice and soft and giving, but it just gives you enough punch to get out to about 50, 55 meters quite comfortably. Um, and today, this venue that we're fishing today, Southfield Reservoir, it's only about four foot deep out there, it's very shallow. So I've been trying a new setup really today, but because it's shallow, um, I'll try mono today. Um, it's a um, four pound Guru drag line, but I've actually got using a shot leader on that as well today, uh, which is eight pound Technium, which is two lengths um, of the rod. So really there's about three turns of the actual shocker on the reel um, when I'm casting. So, um, and because it's mono, it sinks a lot quicker than braid. And in shallow water, getting, that, um, getting your mono, your line down through the chop, underneath the water, out of the arm of the wind, out of the wind is, uh, is definitely the way to go. Right, the rig we're using today is a free, free running um, cage feeder rig, and that's compliant with international feeder fishing rules. Um, all I'm using today is a three hole high um, Preston bullet feeder, 30 gram, ideal for casting into a, into a, a crosswind, um, and that is free running uh, onto the eight pound um, Technium leader. We've got a little link here that we, we use a lot in international fishing, which is 60, 60 millimetres long. Um, it's just a swivel, which is crimped onto 25 pound um, sea fishing line, just to give it a nice stiff, stiff boom effect. Um, and that stopped with a number eight stot, just, just one's more than enough. Um, to um, It's strong enough to, to stop that um, pushing onto the knot and damaging it on the cast. Um, We've then got a little little section of, of twizzled twizzle line, which just creates a boom effect, which kicks it away from um, from the feeder to stop any tangling during the cast. And then that's at the end of that boom is just a loop. And then I've just got a, a 50 centimetre hook length, which again is compliant with international rules. Um, the rules say that you know you can't fish a, a hook length shorter than 50 centimetres. Um, so that's just attached loop to loop to the end of the leader. Uh, that particular hook length is 013 Guru Engage, and, and that is to, on this occasion, a size 16 Camasan B560 microbarb hook, which is ideal for a, a double, double maggot hook bait or, or, or a piece of worm. Um, a key thing that I learned a couple of years ago was um, about keeping worms. Uh, obviously in feeder fishing and all sorts of fishing now, we're using more and more worms, especially on natural venues. I mean, today, for example, um, I, I've fished an hour without putting any worms in today, and the bites have just tailed off and tailed off. Um, I've stopped introducing worm again, and within two casts, the fish were back in the swim. So sometimes you've got to have worms with you, and sometimes we're using them in quantity. Um, about two years ago, um, I suddenly decided to try and um, keep worms, really. Obviously, I used to buy them at the tattle shop like everyone else does, a kilo, a half kilo, whatever. There was always some left over, and rather than just let them go, um, I decided to get a couple of tubs at home 
with some topsoil just from the local garden centre um, and, and start keeping, keeping worms. And after a few weeks of that, doing that, I could actually see that they were actually breeding. Uh, I couldn't believe it. Um, very, very easy, easy to keep. Just some topsoil in, in uh, 50 litre tubs, uh, in my case. Um, just keep them nice and damp, not too wet, but keep them damp. And just by keeping uh, plenty of food going in there, once a week, twice a week, um, just your, your garden, uh, sorry, your, your, well, garden waste as well, but your kitchen waste, tea bags, um, any vegetables, any, any, any fruit left over in your house, put it all in there. They love tea bags, soft and squidgy tea bags, they love them. But you put them in there, give them plenty of food, you'll be amazed at how long you can actually keep them. They will actually breed. I've now got to the stage where I've got five 50 litre tubs now at home and it takes six weeks for these particular dendrobenas, especially during the summer months when they're eating more for them to grow. Um, so I try and rotate them, leave a couple of tubs alone for six weeks at a time and just take the worms out of, 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 a, of a current tub um, and after every section put your worms back in there uh, and the beauty of that is I haven't bought any worms now in the last two years. It means you've got to, always got a, a constant supply at home if you need to get some. And one of the best advantages I've found is that you've got worms in there that are growing right from, right from the egg stage. So that you can go in there at any stage and you can select worms. If you're looking for worms for the hook, for example, you can select worms that are from an inch long to two inch long, whatever size you need. Absolute, one of the best things I've ever done in my fishing. And they just look after themselves. Right, today um, I decided to use uh, a simple mix really, a simple mix of Betatex new F1 mix. Um, I've not really used it on here to, before, um, but with its fish meal content and the quite, it's, it's quite a fine mix, it's obviously designed at F1 fishing, but it's quite fine which is ideal for this sort of venue when um, you want that attraction of fish meal. Um, which is what the fish are used to here, especially the, the, the larger bream. Um, but you want a fine mix because you don't really want to be introducing too much feed um, into the mix itself. What you want to know is you, you want the, the, the particles that are out there are the particles that you've actually introduced, i.e. the casters, the little bits of worm, the little pinkies. So you can actually regulate exactly what you're actually putting out there for the fish to, um, to hopefully try and keep them in the peg. This particular mix is um, it's, it's slightly different from some of the other bait, mix, bait tech mixers. Um, it, it's one which you've got to add the water very, very slowly. You can't just add a lot of water in, otherwise you'll, you'll find out that the mix is completely different and it, it, it won't be right for, you know, for, for what you're using it for. You need to add the water really slowly. Today I've done it with a drill, which is always, your mixes are always better if you, if you, you, know, if you do use a drill. But add the water slowly at a time and give it time to settle. Give it time to rest. Um, I always put it through a, a, a riddle and a sieve afterwards. That's just something that I've always been brought up to do. But I do that with all mixers, regardless of what, what mixers they are. Um, and that'll obviously ensure a lighter, fluffy mix. And it will put more air into the mix as well, which on a venue like this, that's only three or four feet deep, um, it, it, it's nice to have a, a mix that's not too heavy. And a lot of the fish we've caught today as well have been literally within within the first minute of the cast as well so that's another reason why you don't want a mix that's going to be sticking in the feeder too long otherwise obviously your feeder will be um, it'll be depositing the feed on its way back to you as you're playing fish um, but it's a great all-round mix on commercials as well I mean this is obviously not a commercial so it shows it will work on on a variety of venues right, tip choice is very important on these large natural reservoirs um, here today for example it's quite shallow there's a lot of tow even though the wind's dropped a little bit now, the tip is still bent around quite a bit and that's because the water's still moving. Um, it's something that quite often gets overlooked these days, especially with anglers who, who, who already come to the bank with rods already set up. It can be a big problem for a lot of people that because people are setting their rods up at home, selecting a tip at home and when they get to the bank they're assembling the rod and they're fishing and that is it. Once the match starts, they soon quickly find that the water's moving them more than what they imagine, so they've got to change the tips um, according to according to the peg and the conditions. Um, the more the water flows, the stronger the tip you need. Um, there are occasions when a soft tip can work in those occasions, and that's that, that that's when we go into more drop back fishing, uh, when you're tying tying the tip up to up to a feeder, and that's under extreme conditions. Um, so the first thing I always do when I get to the bank is when I get the rod out, 
select a tip that you think is going to be right for the conditions and while you're setting up cast out with a bomb to, to the range that you expect to be fishing and put the rod down and while you're messing around setting the rest of your tackle up and getting your tray sorted you can actually look at the tip if, the, if it looks as though it's correct that's fine brilliant you don't need to change anything but quite often you'll find that it's either, your tips are a little bit too strong a little bit too soft so that is the time when you need to find out you don't want to be finding that out during the match so quickly change quite often details like that can win your matches well we've had a brilliant day's feeder fishing here skimmer fishing at Southfield Reservoir near Doncaster so we want to check out some of my feeder fishing tips you get more information from the June issue of Match Fishing Magazine everyone's a swimmer <laughs>